All right, the link to the meeting notes is in chat. Please add yourself as an attendee. Okay, and um, feel free to add any topics. All right, so let's talk about V1. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, Ardalay, you wanna walk us through this? What do we have left here? Yeah. So, oh, actually, wait, hold on. Did I record? I think I did. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's, it's yes, you recording. Did. I did. Okay, good. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I think the three bullet points that are left are um, creating a section in the Qbert Qbert documentation. Um, the PR is already out um, for that. Then I think you would like to find a place in the user guide to also um, add that. So there is an issue um, I have created for it and I have some ideas. We can talk about that um, once I walk through all of this. Okay, um, let's start with, uh, let's start with the, the documentation. I, I reviewed this, it looks good to me. I think that everything came, here came out nice. I think, uh, okay, so we've already got, so we just need approvals on this is what we need. I don't know if I have yeah. approval in docs. Let me see. But this looks good to me. Let me see. All right, we'll, we'll wait. But um, this looks good. Uh, I think so. I talked with the maintainers yesterday about this, and um, hopefully they get a chance to look at this too. If we don't hear anything, okay, I don't have approval docs. Okay, if, so uh, if uh, we don't hear anything. I think maybe in a day or two, let me ping them and we can get get this all wrapped up. I, I think this is good to go. Yeah, sure. All right. So the next thing, um, I'm going to put the chat or uh, put the link to the user guide in the chat um, for reference. Um, if you can pull that up. Yeah, so if you look at the virtual machines section, there is a index of topics here. Just thinking if we can get an um, item here that says um, release V1 um, for fence scale benchmarks or just say benchmarks. And then under that release V1 data, we can stub all of that in that is in the Kubert developer docs here in the user guide. And that will be a nice reference for people to Take a look. Okay, that makes sense. I was also had had the thought here a second ago that so we have we could do that. We can have the mix and have something for V one, and then we can update it. We could also um, we also wanted to see what was here. So I was thinking like, what about our tooling? Like maybe what? Well, maybe what? Maybe that's maybe what mix might make more sense here. Like, what if we just use the tooling and then we reference back to to the V one release? Or whatever it is, the documentation that we have for the latest. What do you think of oh. that? Because this looks like looking through this, it looks like how to use this stuff. Yeah, that that makes sense. So I think my overarching idea was that if you go go to the welcome page, um, there is there are quite a few sections here. Um, there is no, I mean, the, this section says user guide, but there is no section specifically for um, users. So what I wanted to have is have a benchmark section somewhere in the welcome page so that anyone looking for it, it's clearly visible. Okay. And, so and then benchmarks. link it in, in one of the other tabs. Okay. And, and maybe if we have that, then having the documentation of tooling in the virtual machine section uh, or operation, which are, makes sense, I, I think that will work. Yeah, I'm trying to think what would be the right place. Yeah, maybe in operations, we have something for tooling and then we need oh, to find the right um, place for- And one more thing, I think there is a, mailing list um, thread that talks about breaking out 
these operations and virtual machine tabs into a power SIG uh, documentation page. So maybe we could even get a SIG scale documentation page in this guy. I, I think that oh, would solve okay. a lot of problems. Yeah, because like I was, so I was clicking on these, I was like kind of hoping there'd be a subsection here. Is like if we did benchmarks for scale or something like the scale, then we had benchmarks for V1 and then we had tooling as two subsections that would that would have worked. Yeah, okay. I maybe we, okay, let's let's maybe we, let's go through the mailing list. I, I still think so. I think tooling makes a lot of sense somewhere in here. And then we gotta find the right place to like reference it. Um you know, maybe it means that we need to have a SIG section, SIG scale section somewhere in here. Okay. Mm. All right. What uh what else? Um I think that's it. Then the last thing is um the blog post. Blog post. Okay. Oh we can sync um so the release is likely to be pushed a week because it's right now set to be July 4th. So we're, I think, well, so I, there was some agreement that this needs to be pushed a week. I just don't think it's been publicized yet. So um, I think it's gonna be the 11th is gonna be the day. So we'll uh, I'll sync with you. We'll have a separate meeting about this. I, I, I think I sent it over to you the copy with some, a little bit in there, but a little bit of words, but we need to add some graphs and the stuff. Like we need to put a little bit more work into it. So we'll schedule yeah, time with we you. Can, did you, um, did you get to hear whether this will be a separate blog or this will be the blog with the the release? So oh, it's going to be sorry. the blog with the release, and we can do a separate blog um, where we talk about the stuff either with the tooling, how we did this, the methodology and stuff. I mean, I think where we go into more details. I think what would be good is we focus on some of the high level stuff and highlight what that's in that document, and then and then we kind of cover. Um, any sort of in-depth stuff in a separate blog. That would be a nice follow-up actually for V1. Okay, got it. So we need to come up with two uh, things. One, a concise uh, concise documentation to showcase our V1 release performance benchmarks and then in-depth explanation um, of what those numbers mean for anyone who wants to dig in. Sounds good. Okay, and so I, I think those were the only items I had for V1. Um, one more thing um, I have, we talked about this in the last meeting um, of creating a separate folder um, where we can walk through the release V1 charts. So I have created, um, a subdirectory release v1 and we should be able to get um, data here so the the url will look really nice it will say ci performance benchmark slash release v1 slash job name and then the data and that will be our like index.html okay The other option we could go with is we could use branches, I guess. I don't think we discussed that possibility. Uh, the reason I don't know why if that's I though, because then you got to you lose the historic data. So I think um, I will have to do some digging. The last time I searched for the settings that render the the HTML page, it was only turned on for a uh, main branch. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I also, yeah, maybe that could be reason. I, I think also like, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about historic, like historically, right. Once we go, like if I'm coming to this repo, I'd want to see everything from all the releases. Like that's kind of our pitch. It's not really so much that you look at the branches. Right. So, yeah. okay. I just wanted to float that possibility. So, okay. So that, I think this makes sense. For maintainability, I think we should only keep like three releases here, and then okay, and then we cycle them. Other. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. This looks good. All right, so this is never gonna. So we're not gonna touch this until we remove it. Basically, is what we're gonna do. Okay. 
Correct. Okay. Yes, this folder is essentially locked now. Okay. And then what was the link to the, I was actually fumbling around trying to find it yesterday. What, where's the link to the, um, to the page, to the uh, GitHub page? Oh, uh, that, yeah, I mean, I can share Again, that link, page. but that data is um, obsolete. We still, in, in the nice to haves, we still need to run automation to, um, I mean, we need to wire up automation to get those uh, data published. Okay. Yeah, I'll give me one second. I'll just try to find that link and share it with you. Taking longer than expected. Uh, okay, still looking. That's fine. So what I could do. Uh, so actually, so I was showing, I was showing your PR to the maintainers yesterday, and um, I mentioned that there was like the page for it, but that's alright if you don't have it. Um, so what we could do. Uh, so here, here was one of the recommendations from Roman. Roman made the suggestion mm -hmm. that we could take. Um, where's your PR here? This one. I'll just use this as a reference. That um, the graphs that we have. Oh no no. Let me let me do this. Uh, where's your? Uh, you've got a you've got an old page here that you rendered on your personal info. Yeah, there we go. So he was recommending that we take some of the data points and we can link these to PRs. And so what he said was that there is already the Flake Finder in Prow has this ability to, to, to uh, associate PRs with data points. So there might be a way that we can, we can do this. I, I don't know how reasonable this is. Like, I don't know if you can actually have an embed links into these points or something like that. I don't know how, if that's possible, but we might be able to get the PR um, and then, and then, so there might be a way to attach it. So. I thought that was interesting as a another way to improve this so that we don't have to do those searches manually by date, which is, I mean, it's not bad, but that just could be another improvement that was thrown out there. Well, Lay, if you if you get it, um, just throw it in the um, in the meeting notes, and can so I can reference in the future. Oh, I'm sorry, I was speaking on mute. Um, oh, yeah, I, I was ahead. trying to say that um, that's a very interesting idea at the putting of PRs in there. the The only challenge is that we would have to find a way to get all of the PRs for that day. So what we do is we don't run this post a PR merge or pre PR merge, right? We run this yeah. on a daily basis. So multiple PRs could have gone in. Um, well, maybe that's what we do. Maybe we just we take our Git query and that's the link mm -hmm. that we embed. Exactly. Yeah, we can embed yeah. that, so well, we can automatically get. It. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll leave a note of it here. I mean, I, I don't know how I don't know how easy that is. Like, it sounds really difficult, but maybe it's something we can look at. So yeah, yeah, I will add that to the uh, post v one list I have. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else for the one to last? Is that your last item? Um, no. 
I think we have covered most of it. Okay. All right. That's all the things we wanted to cover today. I don't know. Is there anything else? Any of the topics people want to talk about? Um, so this is not related to the um, Kubert scale, but um, in general for Kubernetes scale, mm -hmm. um, do we, is this a good time to talk about the, the flow control things and, and problems we've discovered there? Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, so, Shang um, and Shang did some experiments um, with the flow control API, and it looks like with Kubernetes one twenty three, um, there was a problem where we were not able to prevent an ohm even after a very restrictive um, configuration. So I think this is a great experiment and finding in terms of improving the functionality of flow control and priority in fairness. Um, it might be good to maybe file an issue for this and bring this up in the six scale um, Kubernetes meeting. That, that's what I was thinking. Um, I don't know if people have thoughts on this. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think we gotta we gotta understand what's going on. Yeah, this is bizarre. I don't know how you, but when when you talk to when you message me about this, I don't know how. Um, if you're limiting, like in my mind, like you're limiting the ability to list to once, one time for I don't know what what the hour long minute or something, and um, the rest of them gets most of the. Uh, the rest of the um, requests get queued and then some get rejected. I don't know how you use enough memory to possibly go boom. Unless it went, unless it goes wrong on the first one somehow. I mean, I, I don't know, like unless it fail, unless it fails to list on the first one and, and like one's actually enough. I don't know. Yeah, so we had a theory about that, why that should not be a problem, right? Um, if we, without API in fairness um, changes, if we did like eight concurrent calls every five seconds, that was being served um, well by the API server with the same number of objects. So that suggests that one call is not enough to, um, you know, bring down the API server. So it's like this consistent pressure that API server sees that somehow blowing it up. Um, so in, in, in each list, each uh, following list call, so you do eight in five seconds. The first one, it loads the etcd data into memory and returns the data. You do another one. Is any of the previous list data that was pulled from etcd still around in memory? Like I'm wondering I, if yeah, that's something I was wondering as well. So what happens is there is a dispatcher which will hold hold the requests in queue, and as mm -hmm. soon as one is done, it will release the other. So temporarily, if the garbage collector go garbage collector has not ran, and the old data is still persisting um, in memory ready to be garbage collected, then the new request will then allocate new data. And then you have this situation where until the garbage collector is run, all of the data is being held in the memory and then it ends. Uh, I That's just a theory. <laughs> I have not had a chance to validate or, or find footprints of, of that. Remotely so I wonder, I wonder too, if, if you reduce the number of pressure, like you, you still do the one list with the restrictive policy, but we reduce the pressure. I wonder like what the limit would show, like if we're saying, you know, if states like 
5,000 secrets, 1,000 secrets. I wonder where we see this. It would be interesting because, um, and then comparing with that, with and without again. Uh, so like so not hitting that upper limit. So help us? So what I'm wondering is that the, is that if it's lower, like I wonder if, because so wait, the theory here is like, let's say one, one list with a priority level config would, would imply that, okay, that we're not able to handle it, right? So then let's lower the pressure and let's see where it is. Let's see what amount of pressure we can take versus without, we're saying that we can handle this level of pressure, whatever that amount is, but then. So I wanted to see like, if there's actually a quantifiable amount that will be like, okay, it's actually 2000 fewer secrets or something that we can take. Uh, I see Shang. Someone say um, wanted yeah. to speak. Yeah. Hey, hey Shang, go ahead. Um, yeah, so how I see it is that um, you are so, um, so just to summarize, right? So previously, we don't have an uh, APF defined in our clusters. And then we discovered a limit of how many, um, how many requests a clusters can hold. And then we set uh, APF settings based on limit we discovered, right? So, um, so the expectation is that if we are stay under that limit, the um, the API server should be okay. But if we go over that limit, the um, the APF setting should protect our control plane pods, uh, like against failure. Now, what we have discovered is that uh, even if we set this APF at the limit. And we still and we and we go over the limit. Um, API server can still experience failure, regardless if we have this APF defined or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're, so you're saying right like this. You're saying that there's no we without the priority level config we can do this, right? With, yes. So without yeah, so that, a, without that makes a sense. config, um, we were able to push to the cluster, you know, to uh, to uh, to handle a certain amount of request uh, at a certain um, at a certain number of like um, like object in the clusters mm -hmm. without issues. Okay. So this so, is based on like that's solely based on the capability of our API server. So okay. for example, like how much memory we allocate into them. So the expectation is that it, like once we have this APF defined, it will kind of set a cap on, you know, on like on, on how much request our API server can handle. And thus the idea or the eventual or the eventual expectation is that even if we go above this request that we have defined in APF. Um, our control plane server should still be able to survive, right? Yeah. So we should but be seeing was... the reverse of this of this outcome. We should be seeing pass here. We should be seeing fails yes. here, right? Oh, okay. um, actually, we should be able to see pass for both of them, because if we are consistently staying within the um, capability capability of our API server, then we don't need to have an APF defined. Yeah, you're right. Let me do this. So um, here, we'll make it eight. So um, this is what I mean. So if you do eight, so let's do like a, a higher number, right? Yeah. This would this should be reversed because this should be however the capability. This should we should be able to stay under here. You think I should do fail still? So uh, when you uh, like when you put a fail beside using a restrictive priority level config and still salt in it, what does that mean? Like is this? So um, so here's the the test is with twenty five thousand PVCs, you do thirty mm -hmm. list requests. The restrictive priority level config means we're just going to allow uh, allowing one list request. This should pass, right? Because we are this, we expect this to pass because it means we're protecting our API server. Mm -hmm. like what you're saying and then without it we have no protection this should fail because we're going to overwhelm it we're going to go over the limit 
No. Oh, mm -hmm. But the, the results you saw was the opposite, right? Um, the result I saw was using restrictive. Yeah. Mm, I don't really understand the first point. Using restrictive priority level config allowing one list request. But in the above line, you have like 30 list requests. So. Yeah, so the test the test is you've got your zone is you've got 25,000 PVCs and then you're you're applying pressure uh, equal to 30 list requests at the same time. So the priority level config is only allowing one list request to go through. It's queuing however many it can and then it's rejecting the rest mm -hmm. to protect the API server, right? Without oh, okay. it, it allows all of them through. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so what I'm so, saying is that yeah. this so test I, failed and this one passed somehow. Um, so what I observed was that, you know, um, so the amount of list request was different. It was not 30, like it was something else. But, um, but, the, but the main idea was that if I have a very restrictive, uh, like priority level config defined for, for, uh, for PVCs, uh, what ended up happening was that um, when I like after I issue these requests to the API server, um, like I saw a huge like I saw a significant memory peak on the API server. So um, so from the client side, like and the then, client then, did not. Well, then how about on this one? What did you see when you did without the prior level config? So without it's the same. So in okay. in both scenario, the API server was overwhelmed, right? But the expectation is that if I have this priority level config, uh, the uh, like once this is to, like once this is defined, our clients should should receive a lot of the four two nine response saying that you know, uh, the um, the uh, the requests were rate limited, right? But my client didn't see this request, and like it didn't see this re like rate limit response, and I still saw a lot of the memory spike on the API server side. So then, then maybe we've got too much pressure then, because if this one also saw the spike, oh. and it and it caused an oom, then then this this number is too high. We've got too much pressure. I understand that this one should it should protect us, but it's not going to in the case of like it's going to allow one list request here. Um, this one's allowed. Yeah. So the expectation is that um, say that um, so we have a road client. So uh, like imagine we have a road client scenario, and we want to prevent this road client from keep spamming our API server. So we have this priority level config defined for this client, right? Yeah, right, Riching, I understand that. But what I'm saying is like, if this doesn't work with a single list request, mm -hmm. then we have too much pressure in the cluster. Like this, this isn't going to protect you. If you can allow one list request that with 25k yeah. PVCs, then then how, like even if, even without it, it's if they both fail, then there's no, and you have too much pressure. So either we have too much pressure or there is a bug. There might be a bug in the priority level config implementation, right? Which is causing a uh, higher memory spike. But well, so what's, what I don't understand though is that did this fail or did this pass? You were able to do, I don't know what the test was. Was it like 10 or something? What, did this did this one without the priority level config cause a new so the test was, uh, so I, so for my P-Tool setting, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, for my list client setting, I had something like a listing every second, listing every second with 25K PVCs at 10 concurrency. So that's something that's very quite extreme. So, uh, so under this condition with or without a priority level config, they both fail. Okay, they both fail. Right, they both fail. But however, if I lower the pressure, say, you know, um, if I request eight concurrent list requests every okay. five seconds, you know, then both will pass. Okay. So, you know, so at this point, I see there's a little difference between having this 
priority level config. Uh, I think what you need to do then is do this. Try this test um, because we need to get a difference. Do do like this. Do like um, like 15k and then do 50 list requests per second. Like this is going to help you with the concurrency. It's not going to help you with with this part if there's too much pressure. Yeah, but you know, um, I was expecting you know uh, having this priority level config it, like would be some sort of a bulletproof way. Uh, the expectation was that once we have this defined, uh, we should be able to you know uh, like reject clients' request, uh, like regardless of how many objects or or the rate of request, right? Like we should be we should still be able to protect our API server regardless of the number of objects or the rate that the client. Well, this is the, I think this is the tricky part. It's like, so it's, it, this stuff is only going to protect you from like incoming requests. It's going to only get you at the, at the API layer. It can't get anything at the memory use layer, at least not that I'm aware of. So mm -hmm. if you've got, if you do one list request and this has a hundred thousand PBCs, right? That will um it and it's just going to be one request or the or so the inverse of that, which is where priority level config will help you, mm -hmm. is that if you had 1,000 PVCs and you had 100,000 list requests, it would help you there. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's it's only going to get you at the at the request layer. It's not going to get you at the. It's not. I don't think it's going to help you at the memory layer. I think I think what you need to do is this test. I think you need to go down the PVC count and then increase your request per second. Then I guess that would be a separate discussion. Like maybe it's not for for this for this discussion. Then um, then we have to think about how do we tell our tenants, you know? Because previously we were uh, we were advertising a rate limiter that's able to uh, protect our control plane server regardless of our client's behavior, right? But if there's a gap. Um, in the yeah, I think, I think that yeah. that's the gap is that you have to limit this stuff. Yeah, you can't, we can't, we have to be cognizant of what go of things that cause a lot of pressure and then, and then limit them. Not, not, not rate limit them. We have to, we can rate limit them, but we, we need to limit the number of these things because the, this sounds like we're, we've gone over the pressure and no matter what we do, it will, it will break, it'll own the server. So um, so previously I had 25k PVCs, right? And I was able to list 25 25k PVCs at the rate okay. of every five seconds and 10 concurrency for for one hour without any issues, without any priority level config defined. So I don't think it's the amount of PVCs that matters because you know Okay, so you've seen this. Um five no, for uh, for our for your last bullet point, both passed. Both passed. Five no five uh five list requests per second. No, it was it was eight list requests every five seconds. Eight list requests every five seconds. And this passed for both. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you know, at this point, you know, so. That's why I was trying to say, like I, um, as of now, I don't really see how this priority level config changes anything. Like maybe with this priority level config defined, we can stretch, we can stretch the amount of request that we can send to the API server a bit. So, for example, you know, pre like previously, the save point was 25k PVCs, a this request per five seconds. That was the save point. Maybe with this priority level config defined, we can push the save point um, further. Maybe, but like regardless, you know, I still see, uh, I still see that under extreme cases, under extreme amount of a uh, list request that we send to the API server, we can still have like breakage. Okay, I think I see what you're saying now. So in this case right here, this. Um, should be equivalent to this. They should come out to be the same because we're only allowing one list through, or pretty much we're only going to allow one list through. Okay. 
So yeah, the the reason why I was trying to have this discussion was because of this observed case. I think it would be a good bug against API and fairness uh, implementation, and we can get some discussion going in the six scale um, Kubernetes meeting because as as we have discussed, I expect both bullet points to produce equivalent results, right? Yeah, this one should be passed. They both should pass. Yeah. Because you have this one. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so other things that I was thought, well, my intuition to this problem is that because the API priority fair, uh, priority and fairness component itself is part of the API server itself. And we don't really know if the APF components on, on the API server can scale very well, right? So if they are coupled together and this component doesn't scale well, then my intuition is that, you know, while this component is rejecting or recueing or, or like all, um, all these requests itself, can use a lot of memory. So if that's the case, then you know, um, if 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 the API server is spending too much memory or too much resources in assigning the priority for each request, then we can have a problem. Yeah. So maybe. Well. So I think what you're saying is the theory is this is using memory and it's sort of tipping us over the limit um, could, because we have a lot be. of pressure, right? Could be. Could be. So. Maybe what you could do is try, I mean, you could prove that. I mean, this would be, this would be the test, right? Maybe it's like, maybe it's like this. Maybe we go back down a little bit and we jack this up really high. So this would be like, you could do like a hundred, right? This should absolutely break. Like we're, mm -hmm. we should be certain about that. This should not. So maybe that's what we need to do. We need to hit some extremes here. And, um, well, I don't know if I, this is, maybe we do like 50. I don't know what. Sure. I don't know how the memory okay, translates. Fair point, fair point. Yeah, so like, so a little bit less pressure, so we get a little bit less memory when we load all those secrets or all those PVCs into um, the memory. So we give a little bit of breathing room, but then we increase this. Let's see, let's see what we come out on the other side here. That might give some credence to that. We're actually just going, tipping over the edge here with the PLC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think it's worth a try before we go um, to the sure. six skill group because we should see this. Let's just let's see this work. You know what I mean? Like let's. Like I feel like this 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 is working, but we just need to. Let's just see it works. Let's just confirm it that we're working at the that it works the way we expect, and then and then. You know, let's work backwards oh. and see what could be going on here. Yeah. So um. So currently, like. Among all of the testings I have done, um, each of the tests shown both results with uh, like regardless of if we have this priority level config defined or not, right? So I think one I, like I think the case that you try to make is that you want to try to find a combination where we can have a failure without it, but we can have a success with it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah, see, let's confirm it works. Have... Yeah, so sorry. this confirms um, this confirms that once we have this APF defined for objects, we can have some benefits to the clusters, but I don't think it's like still bulletproof at this point. Yeah, no, I agree. I think if if on the backside of with memory, I don't I don't know how you could deal with this. Like the request coming in, I don't think knows. I don't think PLC knows how big the memory footprint is for the request. Yeah, so, like maybe um, that's the limitation that we yeah. can discuss. Or maybe that can maybe that could be something we can look at as an enhancement or something. Yeah. Okay. Ole, what do you think? Is do you uh, do you agree or disagree? Yeah, yeah. I think this is PLC not knowing the footprint of a request that is coming in is a well-known uh, problem in the implementation. And the way they are approaching it is they have given a fixed uh, assignment to an incoming list request in, a, in hope 
that once they learn more from experiments, um, they will be able to fine tune the implementation to have more uh, variable and more realistic assignments. So from this experiments, we can probably give them data points on um, what could um, what could be a reasonable estimate of the incoming request, um, a, a good heuristic, um, and and improve that. But but that's that's like long way into into the future. But those are certainly possibilities um, with this. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else, Soleil? Shane? Then I think we covered this. We do this next. Do this next test. All right. Any other topics then? No. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for your time. We'll end a little bit early. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye bye.